Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about why is SpaceX building the Starship. Elon Musk is working on a vehicle that could revolutionize space travel. The Starship, as it'll be called, will be a fully reusable transportation system capable of transporting up to 100 people to Mars. Before continuing this video like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Elon Musk's private spaceflight business SpaceX was founded with the idea of making life multiplanetary. He claims that relocating humans on other worlds, such as Mars, could save humanity in the event of a calamity on Earth, such as a massive asteroid hit. There will be two paths for history to take. One option is that we stay on Earth indefinitely. With an ultimate extinction event Musk stated this in 2016. There will be two paths for history to take. One option is that we stay on Earth indefinitely. With an ultimate extinction event the SpaceX found Founder has frequently expressed his desire to develop settlements on Mars. Settlements, he says, would require a significant number of people to become self-sustaining. To make your fantasy a reality, you'll need a capable automobile. The Starship is a rocket and spacecraft combo capable of transporting more than 100 people to Mars at a time. The technology is built to be completely and quickly reusable. Because the main hardware pieces are totally reusable, they are not thrown in the water or allowed to burn up, as is the case with certain other launch systems, but instead return to the ground to be flown again. Rapid reusability refers to the ability of Starship to be refilled with propellant and ready to launch again in a short period of time after returning from space. Much like an aircraft, this lowers the overall cost of the company. The spacecraft, dubbed Starship, will be launched atop a super heavy rocket. The integrated system, known as Starship, will will tower 120 meters, 394 feet, tall. Let's start with the spacecraft, the stainless steel vehicle, with its nose cone and landing fins. Looks like a rocket ship from the golden age of science fiction. Six highly efficient Raptor engines, developed over a decade by SpaceX, are mounted at the back of the 50M, 160 feet, long craft. The engine's design reduces the quantity of propellant wasted by breaking down the combustion process into phases. The propellant tanks are located in the vehicle's center. These provide the Raptors with liquid methane, CH4, and liquid oxygen, O2. The fuel is methane, and the oxidizer is oxygen, a chemical that causes the fuel to burn. Methalox is the name given to this combo. Although methane is an unusual fuel for rocket engines, it can provide a lot of thrust. In view of Musk's plans for Mars, it's also a wise decision. The Sabatier reaction, according to SpaceX founder Elon Musk, might be used to synthesize CH4 from Martian subterranean water and atmospheric carbon dioxide, CO2. Refueling the Starship using Martian resources for the return voyage to Earth would provide a level of self-sufficiency, making travels more viable and cost-effective. A massive payload compartment towards the front of the spacecraft, also referred to as the upper stage, will be able to transport significant cargo or people to deep space destinations. Let's go on to the rocket now. Super Heavy will be packed with three, 400 tons, 6.8 million pounds, of cryogenic, chilled, methalox, and will be 70 meters, 230 feet, long. It will be propelled by 32 Raptor engines. This number has changed numerous times and should have a maximum thrust of more than 70 meganewtons, 16 million pounds. It should be able to carry at least 100 tons of payload to low Earth orbit, and maybe as much as 150 tons. This will make Super Heavy more powerful than the massive Saturn V launcher utilized in the 1960s and 1970s for the Apollo moon missions. The integrated Starship system will begin to tip over towards the intended orbit as it ascends from the launch pad. Super Heavy rolls over while coming back to Earth after the upper stage separates in space. Super Heavy will spread steel structures dubbed grid fins from the sides of the rocket as it descends, fashioned like potato waffles. These will assist in guiding the rocket stage back to its launch pad so that it can be relaunched. SpaceX has a bold proposal to use its launch tower to catch the falling rocket. While the spacecraft and rocket are sitting on the launch pad, this tower allows engineers and crew members access to the spacecraft and rocket. From the launch tower, a pair of steel arms will stretch. As the spent booster falls onto these arms, the grid fins will bear the load. Because of its resemblance to a creature from the Godzilla films, the skyscraper has been called Mechazilla. 
Meanwhile, after separation, the upper stage of the Starship might be placed in a parking orbit, allowing it to be refueled with propellant. If you just fly, Starship, to orbit, and don't replenish it, that's quite good you'll get 150 tons to low Earth orbit, and no fuel to go anywhere else. Musk said in 2017. Grid fins the spacecraft would dock, or marry, with another Starship circling the Earth that serves exclusively as a propellant depot to refuel. What will Starship's purpose be? Musk plans to build roughly 40 rooms in the payload area near the front of the upper stage for long-haul voyages to Mars and back, which might take up to nine months each way. If you really wanted to cram people in, you could have five or six people per cabin. However, I believe we should expect two or three individuals per cabin. For a total of roughly 100 people per voyage to Mars Musk stated the following. Common areas, storage space, a galley, and a shelter would be located in the payload bay to protect passengers passengers from solar storms, which occur when the sun spews hazardous charged particles into space. NASA's Artemis Nine, mission, eight, which intends to create seven, a long-term human six, presence on the moon, five, will also use the Starship, start, the U.S. Two, space agency gave one, SpaceX a $2.89 billion dollar contract in April 2021 to develop Starship into a lander capable of sending astronauts to the moon this decade. The version designed for Artemis flights would lack the heat shield and flaps required for a return trip to Earth. Instead, following its first launch from Earth, the Starship human landing system would remain in space, allowing it to be utilized for many voyages between lunar orbit and the moon's surface, the cargo, or on crud, variant of Starship has a payload bay that opens up like a crocodile's mouth. This would make it possible to launch satellites from it. The high payload capacity, according to SpaceX, offers up possibilities for new sorts of robotic science missions, including telescopes larger than the James Webb Observatory, which will succeed Hubble in the near future. The technique might also be utilized for space tourism. Elon Musk has promised Yusaku Maizawa a Japanese internet retail millionaire, a journey around the moon in 2023. It may also make high-speed voyages between Earth's many destinations. Musk claims that Starship will someday be able to transport people to places in the greater solar system, including gas giants like Jupiter. However, this is a long-term goal. What happens when the higher stage lands? Engineers have used parachutes or constructed the vehicle such that it can land on a runway to carry other spacecraft back to Earth. The upper stage of the Starship, on the other hand, adopts a different strategy. When the ship is ready to land on Earth, it enters the atmosphere at a 60-degree angle before belly flopping to the ground in a horizontal position. The vehicle's descent is slowed totally by the environment in this mode of return. The disadvantage is that Starship is inherently unstable in this setup. When is it going to take off? SpaceX has been testing multiple upper stage designs at its Starbase site in Boca Chica, Texas. During the last three years, the business began in 2019 with a 39-meter tall test piece called Starhopper, which resembled a water tower in appearance, and flew it to 150 meters above ground Starship serial number SN8. The first prototype with a nose cone and flaps soared to a height of 12.5 kilometers in December 2020. It belly flopped back to Earth. Providing SpaceX with crucial engineering data on the vehicle's final stages of return from space SN8, on the other hand, approached the landing pad too quickly and forcefully, causing it to crumple and explode. Three more test objects detonated until Starship SN15 successfully landed in May 2021 with a soft landing. Starship will be launched on Super Heavy for its maiden orbital test flight in 2022, according to SpaceX. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.